So I'm making these uh, solid uh, tool posts or blocks. I think it's a very big improvement to the overall performance and uh, enhancing the rigidity of the lathe. Um, it's not very complicated to make. Just to start off with a block of steel having I sold it. I and then you end up with sort of piece that you can mill. And then I just use the roughing cutter here and then the uh, sort of a face mill up here. And now we use a, an end mill to get those slots afterwards. And just four bolts then to the T-slots and the rigid tool post mounting stud there. And the roughing cutter is of course a roughing cutter. I'll remove a little bit of this. So it leaves a rough finish, but still I think it's acceptable. I used what I had, so I have, it was, you know, it's not intended, but that's how it's, it is. It's just visual anyway. But here the finish is of course a little bit of texture because of the fact that I used the roughing cutter, but I mean, it's just visual. It should have been ground, of course, the same here, should have been ground, but not until I have the, what is depicted over there, the um, cabinet or the lower part of the sake grinder. I have no means other to visit my friend's shop and I don't do that for this small stuff and it's only visual anyway. And actually, could debate on top here with uh, the mounting of the tool loader. It's good that it is some texture. I could scrape it, but steel is uh, not the best to scrape. And um, I tried, but I don't think it's improvement of the finish really. It's just, uh, uh, well, degrading it. So I'll leave it as is. So it's just for visual the way it looks now. I mean the tool sitting over here anyway, just the mounting screws and then this is just enough to cover the hole in the cross slide. And uh, I said I used different types of cutters, so I used a roughing cutter here. And uh, to, to make the sides and uh, to make the slot I use of course the, the end mill. And, uh, this I don't have any any intermediate or should have been a little bit uh, smaller also but this actually functions nice you can also hog off material of course but then it loads the machine really it's not it's a hefty machine in a hobby hobby wise but it's not really a big and hefty machine so this kind of loads uh, loads the mill quite hefty so um, I use this a little bit uh, cautiously but this is nice to get at least some kind of fly cutter finish or fly or surface finish. I may have shown this numerous times before. Anyway, for those of you that uh, have such a mill, unlock the spindle. You can rotate and you can you can uh, just lower it a little. There is a automatic feed also for all three axes, but I just lower it manually. So uh, out there and then rotate and uh, to loosen the head, four bolts here. And then you have a system where you have a, a lock here and then unlocking, you can rotate. And then if you rotate a little bit and then lock it again, then it is snap in, in to, into the position like this, in case it's 45 degrees. So if I go a little bit further, I want it back to 90 degrees. Just uh, go a little bit beyond and then it snaps into 90 degrees there. So I think uh, convenient.
And also here how I do the, the change to another tool. So now I want to change to the end mill. So I uh, spanner and then there's a knot over here. So I undo that. My method is to lower it, no, to undo it a little bit and then to just whack it there. And now it's loose and can be removed. And then of course, together with the, the fact that I have it in back gear, this is now with a bit of resistance so I can, this should be okay enough. And then just throw it back again. And then it's a matter of setting it to 90 degrees here on the scale here. There, and then I can use this, which is a 15 degree uh, setting. And then we get it in the middle, and then I lock the spindle again. And then out with this, on, unless you do that, you will damage the gear if you accidentally hit the corner or something. When I change tools in the mill, I usually just you do it as I showed in the mill. But if I have a collet holder, a collet, I mean, in this case, a 16 mil. Uh, and mill. I use this too because I can get more firm grip. This is a just uh, a spanner I bought. You see, NTN, the bearing company. So I thought that was okay instead of having these other just fixed spanners. In this case, I just continue with the end mill here, although it takes longer, uh, at least have the same height with no problems. And I also like to uh, lock down the in and out travel and use the longitudinal feed. Took a while, but not really that long. So acceptable finish here, I think. So completed. And I think with acceptable surface finish. So just uh, off the mill here a little bit. I can file it. And then this, of course, I left it uh, uh, um, a couple of hundreds oversized, but this will be okay. And then just this with the smart lift. Of course, just with T nuts, both from my third and screws. Locating it like that, and then just mount it with screws solid there. And um, this is all done to be able to mount a bigger tool holder. Just a normal Chinese uh, one, but in this case I bought it with similar type 2 loaders. And um, the stud here, <laughs> I thought it was metric but it uh, and 14 millimeter, but it actually is uh, 9, 16, 18, meaning UNF, 18 threads per inch. So you need a tap. If you don't do, as I probably could have done just turn this down to let's say 12 millimeters and thread it m12 this alone will cost you well it's not cheap so uh, but now I have it these are then the 250 size and then this allows you of course to have a better, I think, more rigid setup with this tool post or tool block instead of the compound, bigger tool and tool post here, and also then scraped and rigid uh, cross slide. And of course now I have um, two sets of uh, knots on this screw, also modified to have one in the, at the rear. And this is of course in conjunction with the, with the ELS setup I have it. 
this is manual with the ELS, then I'd prefer to have the possibility to unlock also the set screw there to use it fully manual. Uh, in this case, I've uh, used a belt drive, same as here, belt drive there. So, anyway, this um, two post I think is a, is a nice improvement with the mounting it on the block there. And because I wanted to also use the same tooling as I do in my bigger lathe, 16 mil, I open up the slot here from 15 to 16. Alternatively, you could of course, uh, if you wanted, as I do, to use the bigger tools, you can cut down, of course, a 16 mil holder that would, um, or tool that would fit in. Also, now I can use my bigger tool here also. So, um, all in all, I think it's a worthwhile uh, addition to Myford to be able to use both bigger tooling and uh, much better stability, especially when parting off.